good evening, this is Hello Steve coming to you on the 30th of December. Now, first of all, let me thank all of my new subscribers. Uh, thank you for subscribing. This is absolutely excellent. We are whizzing our way towards 6,000 and uh, I am very pleased to welcome you here to join this conversation and uh, be part of the narrative in this changing, dynamic world in which we live. And I thought I'd put together something uh, a little bit more on the national and the uh, Ontario level. And uh, so we're going to look at the year in re review politically. So we're going to look at the uh, election of Doug Ford, uh, a review of Justin Trudeau. And although um, the newspaper they've chosen for some of these reviews is the Toronto Sun, which is a notoriously conservative newspaper, uh, you're not going to believe this, but when I searched for some good news about Trudeau in 2018, uh, I actually couldn't come up with uh, too, too much. And uh, this article is by Andre Moran, and he was the Ombudsman for Ontario. And I've always felt that he was a um, pretty, pretty reasonable and metered kind of personality on this kind of stuff. And uh, so we're going to take a look at that. And a little look at a crazy Wilfrid Laurier situation. Uh, you remember the incident uh, earlier this year with Lindsay Shepherd, uh, where she was basically taken off into a room and interrogated by two professors and a human rights officer for the university on some trumped up charge who are now uh, planning to sue uh, Lindsay Shepherd for releasing the um, transcript and the audio of that meeting. Anyway, let's go take a little look at those stories and uh, we'll come back and uh, wrap up. Okie dokie, let's take a look. So this is Andre Moran. Uh, the cream has yet to rise to the top of Trudeau's government. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau congratulates new Veteran Affairs Minister uh, Seamus O'Regan at a swearing-in ceremony at Rideau Hall in Ottawa on Monday, August 28, 2017. Last week in this space we ranked the top three worst cabinet ministers in Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government. The gold medal was given to Veterans Minister Seamus Shameless O'Regan, as he has been nicknamed by many who believe he's just over his head and doesn't understand how his portfolio works and seems dismissive of veterans he's there to serve. O'Regan's story is simply pathetic. He claims that having to hang up his complimentary $2,000 and up Canali suits when he left CTV News left him psychologically wounded like a soldier coming back from the theatre of war. So according to him, he empathises with them and understands how it feels to be battle-scarred. Poor baby. Second in the incompetence line is Melanie Jolie, Minister Responsible of Tourism, Official Languages and La Francophonie, who thought it was a great idea to spend $5.6 million of your money for a 25-day rink on Parliament Hill, even though one of the largest rinks in the world, according to the hype, is the federally run Rideau Canal, about 100 metres away. Third in line for Gouverneurs is the insufferable Environment Minister Catherine McKenna. She's out there on social media trolling anyone and everyone who doesn't share her view of climate change and blocking those who disagree with her. Doesn't she have anything better to do? Let's continue down the list to assess the runners-up in the talentless pool of Trudeau's cabinet. Number four belongs to ethically challenged finance minister Bill Morneau, who comes across as inoffensive enough until you remember he was the guy who, in his disclosures to the ethics commissioner, happens to have forgotten the value of his villa in France. Whoops! The ethics commissioner fined millionaire Morneau all of $200 Canadian for that lapse in memory. He apparently found some loose change in his pocket and paid the fine. And how about number five, Defence Minister Harjit Sarjan's nose stretcher exaggerating his role for Operation Medusa in Afghanistan in 2006, describing himself as the architect of the successful mission. Operation Medusa is widely considered Canada's most successful operation there. Just another slap in the face for our soldiers. How can you possibly make such a mistake? A red-faced Sarjan had to fess up to the media apologising seemingly because he was caught embellishing his role more than anything else, saying, I'd like to apologise for my mistake in describing my role. I'd like to retract that, and I'm truly sorry for it. 
I in no way would like to diminish the great work that my former superiors and our great soldiers. Sarjan's original claim to fame mistake was in a prepared statement. He can't say it was the slip of the tongue. A military member called him out for making up a bald-faced lie. The sixth worst performer is none other than Global Affairs Minister Christia Freeland. Her constant poking in the eye of the bear, otherwise known as US President Donald Trump, almost sent to the precipice any chance of getting a new free trade agreement. Does Trudeau have any talent on his back benches? Actually, he does. There are two actually billed as star candidates in the last election, but this star never rose from the back seats of Parliament. What surprises me is that the former head of the army and three-star general Andrew Leslie never made it to cabinet. This guy ran things, did things, big things. He's an accomplished former military member, but never made it past the backbenches in parliament. Isn't he the type the liberals would want to tap for an important cabinet job? Maybe even defense minister or minister of justice or any portfolio. Then there's pot guru Bill Blair, former Toronto chief of police just recently elevated to a sort of cabinet post no one quite understands. Up until lately, he was an afterthought in the Liberal government once the election was over, save for legalising pot. Now he's heading a department-less and hard-to-define job as Minister of Border Security and Organised Crime Reduction, whatever that is. In Trudeau's world, not being a visible minority or a woman are two strikes against you. I can't profess being a fan of either Leslie or Blair, but why are they not fully-fledged cabinet ministers? As they were both recruited as star candidates with full credentials, I'm pretty sure that didn't mean warming the back benches. OK, after fast and furious 2018, Ford will keep his foot on the gas in New Year. Doug Ford didn't think he was going to spend 2018 in provincial politics, let alone spending half the year as Premier of Ontario. I declared I was running for mayor, Ford reminded me during a phone interview. Ford has set his sights on taking on Toronto Mayor John Tory in a rematch of the 2014 mayoral race. So what has Doug Ford done in his first half year as Premier? Ford said while the pace has been fast, he doesn't intend to let up, noting many past leaders told him their mistake was not moving fast enough to enact change. So what surprises him the most about his new job as Premier? I guess it is just the volume of work. So many areas to take care of, Ford said. And then there is a deficit. We knew there was going to be a big deficit, but we didn't realise just how big. We are going to tackle this responsibly. Uh, if it takes us four years to do it, so be it, said Ford. Ford has three and a half years left as Premier, and if the first six months are any indication, I don't expect a dull moment between now and then. The fun begins again in January. Ontario Premier Doug Ford, accomplishments so far, ended the cap and trade carbon tax of Kathleen Wynne. Uh, well done. This is a nonsense deal at all. Car carbon has nothing to do with the issue, and the money is much better spent cleaning up the environment and mitigating the effects of climate change. Reduce natural gas costs and the cost for gas at the pump. Can't be bad. Launched a challenge to Trudeau's federal carbon tax. Well, he's not alone in this, uh, as uh, Scott Moe from Saskatchewan and, uh, and now Brian Pallister from Manitoba has joined the crew. So I think Trudeau's uh, federal carbon tax uh, is up for a serious challenge. They scrapped the Green Energy Act. Allowed brews to sell for one dollar a bottle if they want to do so. Scrapped wins annual escalator tax on booze. Reduced cost of OHIP uh, by reforming the program while not cutting coverage. Turfed Mayor Schmidt, the $6 million man from Hydro One. Cancelled 758 renewable energy projects that did not meet requirements. Cancelled the unneeded White Pines Wind Farm in Prince Edward County. Legislated an end to the York University strike. Froze fees for drivers in Ontario. Froze fees for fishing and hunting licenses and added th more free days. Started reinvesting in police guns and gang units to tackle criminal violence. 
added nine new OPP detachments and extended the GO service in core areas and also to regions like Niagara and Kitchener-Waterloo. So some of these are small potatoes, you know, the fishing fees and uh, hunting licenses, but uh, it certainly appeals to uh, certainly a group of people. Um, fees for driver's licenses uh, in Ontario, that is the basic that affects everybody, so I think that's going to be quite a, a good thing. Uh, Cancelled uh, 758 renewable energy projects that did not meet the requirements. Now you may think this is actually a bad thing, but because of the Green Energy Act, we were adding uh, hydro producing units that were just not needed and we were subsidizing all of those units. Uh, so the Green Energy Act set up a demand for hydro that just wasn't needed and uh, you know I think it's wise to take a sort of a, a bit more of a wait and see approach because everybody is cutting back uh, they're using less and less hydro and in fact hydro has said that uh, they need people to use more hydro okay so uh, I don't know why we're building you know more generation plants and, and hydro generation plants when we really are not using what we have right now the other thing that Doug Ford has done is a free speech policy mandatory on campuses in the in the new year and uh, this, of course, I'm sure is driven by the, well, here it is. And in 2017, Wilfrid Laurier University graduate Lindsay Shepard was told she was creating an unsafe environment for her students when she aired an episode of TVO's The Agenda that featured University of Toronto professor Jordan Peterson discussing his position on changes to the Canadian Human Rights Act. Premier Doug Ford promised during the spring provincial election campaign that he would require every publicly funded post-secondary institution to adopt a free speech policy or face funding cuts. We are ensuring that Ontario's publicly assisted colleges and universities defend free speech for everybody, remembering that free speech is not an invitation to be reckless or hurtful and it all comes down to respect. Okay, this is what we need. Uh, and I think I'm going to do a separate story about Lindsay Shepard and uh, the follow-up on all of the lawsuits. I was going to do it in this video, but I just don't think this time we've gone on a little too far as it is. And uh, Justin Trudeau's approval rating at lowest point since 2015, poll says. Uh, the wave of popularity Prime Minister Justin Trudeau rode to a majority government in 2015 seems to be at its lowest point yet, a new poll suggests. The polling firm found that 35% of respondents approve of the PM's performance and that's quite a drop from the 63% rating he received in a similar poll conducted in his first month in office. 39 of the respondents in the new survey said they strongly disapprove of the Prime Minister while just 8% said they strongly approve. And when you look at these results, uh, disapprove 19% and strongly approve 39% that is 58% and strongly approve and approve as 8% plus 27% is 35% approve of Justin Trudeau and 58% disapprove or strongly disapprove of Justin Trudeau. The fires of discontent for Trudeau burned brightest in Saskatchewan and Alberta, where a whopping 79 and 78 percent of respondents, respectively, said they disapprove of the PM. So there you go, Justy. So taking a look at the year in review politically, um, certainly the absolutely devastating defeat of Kathleen Wynne, uh, I think, is an indicator of the mood of the people. Uh, and that liberal ideology and semantics is not going over too well, uh, not just uh, in the province of Ontario, but certainly in the province uh, in Saskatchewan and certainly with the NDP, uh, Rachel Notley in uh, Alberta. Uh, I think she is set to lose uh, her election uh, coming up next year. And, um, and of course New Brunswick is also opposed to a carbon tax. So uh, I'm thinking uh, Justin Trudeau could be in a little deep next year. Uh, I think that uh, even with um, that even with Maxime Bernier uh, spreading off into the uh, People's Conservative Party or the People's Party of Canada, 
Uh, no, I think we're set to see a Conservative government next year. I think Andrew Scheer uh, is going to follow the trend of certainly a good portion of Europe now, uh, America, and certainly um, some of the larger provinces. Quebec uh, has certainly gone extremely hard right. Uh, the coalition Avenir Quebec uh, is uh, certainly a very right-wing party and they have taken a very hard line uh, in their early months of uh, their majority in Quebec. And so, um, yes, it's going to be very interesting to see how we move forward with this. And, uh, of course, it's even more interesting to find out that Generation Z, which is the generation coming up now behind the Millennials, are far more conservative and have uh, a more of a conservative ideology, conservative values, uh, certainly in lines with a work ethic, uh, more of a moral component, um, this kind of thing, you know, less, um, less snowflakey, you know what I mean. So you may find that the millennials or the snowflake generation find themselves sandwiched between my generation, who I would consider myself um, a traditional liberal, Okay, which is very centrist. I could lean, uh, well, I certainly do. I lean left as far as openness is concerned, but I certainly do uh, fall to the right-hand side where it comes to rights, responsibility, and uh, fiscal responsibility especially. Okay, so uh, this could be a very interesting turning point, and I'm very much looking forward to the outcomes in 2019. Okay, so it looks like I am going to be stuck home tomorrow evening. Uh, it, uh, we have a freezing rain warning. It looks like it's going to be absolutely miserable. Uh, so I think I will be uh, celebrating online somehow. And uh, that is good too. Absolutely no problem with that at all. Okay, so this is Hound Dog Steve signing off. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, like and subscribe below. Uh, click that big red button. Uh, it surely does help when you do that. And uh, please leave a comment. Be part of the conversation. Uh, join us uh, online here to see if we can at least come up with some kind of solutions, some ideas going forward, or a critique of the present narrative. Okay, you take care, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.